Good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing today? My name is Yokiko. I am with the Washington Student Achievement Council, and we're excited to get the next Wednesday webinar started. So I'd like to first introduce our presenters. I have Michelle Alejano and Dale Tamayose from the Washington College Access Network. Um, and one little programming note, I would like to let everyone know that if you have questions, we're going to answer questions at the end. So please use the chat box inside the webinar. So I'm going to be fielding questions and holding them off until the end. So Michelle and Dale can answer those questions. So make sure to keep them in, write them down, and we will get to them as soon as we can at the end. And with that, I'm going to send it off to our two presenters. Great. Thank you, Yokiko. Good morning, all, and welcome to the College Bound Scholarship Repledge Campaign webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about a campaign to inspire ninth graders to recommit to the College Bound Scholarship Pledge and prepare for a future after high school. So, First of all, you probably want to know who's on the phone here. Um, I'm Michelle Alejano. I'm the director of the Washington College Access Network. Um, a little bit of background, I've been doing college-bound work since 2008. Our goal is champion championing statewide college readiness and access initiatives aimed at closing the opportunity gap. As a part of WACAN strategic efforts, we direct a nine-member statewide team, which we'll talk about more later. I've been with education for 16 years in both post-secondary K-12 and student engagement initiatives, focusing on training, system-wide approaches, statewide communication, and providing that day-to-day -day support. And my name is Dale Tamayose. I am the Communications and External Relations Manager for the Washington College Access Network. Um, I've been with WACAN for about two years, um, but before that I did um, I was in higher education for about five years and did um, college access and retention work for about five years as well. So we're super happy to be here with you today and we thank you so much for dedicating an hour of your time to us. A little bit about who we are. The Washington College Access Network is committed to making significant change in our state. We partner very closely with the Washington Student Achievement Council and the Office of Superintendent of Public Education college access readiness practitioners, K-12, and post-secondary. Um, our main focus is the college-bound scholarship. So a little bit about our mission. Our mission is to increase post-secondary enrollment for all Washington State students with a focus on underserved students, underrepresented students. We do this by strengthening schools. So we are here to partner with you by offering customized training. We work on supporting your college readiness teams and as we're doing today, we promote key statewide awareness campaigns to promote the importance of post-secondary. So just a real quick reminder about what the College Bound Scholarship is. The College Bound Scholarship was established by the legislature in 2007. The purpose of this program is to provide state-funded financial aid to low-income students who may not consider college as a possibility because of cost. Eligibility for the scholarship is a two-part process. First, students whose families are income eligible must submit and complete an application during 7th or 8th grade, and no later than June 30th of their 8th grade year. The second phase is students must complete the scholarship pledge requirements, meet income eligibility as determined by colleges, and fill out that FAFSA and or WAPSA their senior year of high school. As a reminder of this amazing program, the scholarship covers tuition at comparable public colleges, some fees, and a very small book allowance. Um, so a little bit about how this works in our state with these two entities. So we work very closely with the Washington Student Achievement Council. They are the state agency that owns and administers the College Bound Scholarship and maintains the College Bound Portal. They work in collaboration with us, and we provide outreach for the College Bound Scholarship. It's a very amazing partnership. I'm smiling at you, Kika, right now. Um, the Washington College Access Network is housed and it's within, within the College Success Foundation. We have eight regional officers who will work with you to build the system. Um, we serve as liaisons with WASAC and school districts. And finally, we really help promote that seventh grade to college enrollment. So for today, now that we have that background, we're going to go over, one, ninth grade challenges and the College Bound Repledge opportunity. Digging a little deeper, we want to talk about motivating millennials. 
So what is the secret sauce to making sure that we can make a repledge really work for ninth graders? Then we'll cover the goals of the repledge campaign, ways to get involved, some program examples, and how to grow the We Are College Mound movement. Okay, so you're probably wondering why are we focusing on freshmen in high school? Um, so I have a couple of statistics here on this next slide that will prove the urgency of focusing efforts on this group of students. Um, first of all, up to 40% of ninth grade students in cities with the highest dropout rates repeat the ninth grade, but only 10 to 15% of those repeaters go on to graduate. So think about that for a second. We'll go a little bit deeper. 29 out of 51 states see their greatest leakage in the education pipeline occurring during ninth grade because a lot of students are essentially dropping out and not completing high school. So another reason to focus on this very important grade level. And the third is that most high school dropouts fail at least 25% of their ninth grade courses while 8% of high school completers experience the same difficulty. So this goes to not only dropping out, but like why students are thinking about dropping out or why they're not continuing on um, to 10th grade. So um, this transition from middle school to high school can be seen as pretty challenging. Um, I've had the opportunity to read a lot of the research, and there's a lot of reasons why um, eighth grade to ninth grade transition is pretty difficult. The freshman year for some students uh, may be associated with feelings of like loneliness, isolation, and disconnection from their peers. And um, students who succumb to these factors fall behind in their classes, thus some of the failure rate components that you just saw, which makes it harder to graduate on time with their peers. Um, thus, the successful completion and whole process of their ninth grade year is extremely pivotal in increasing graduation rates. Developing strategies and interventions to ensure a successful ninth grade year is even more important for low income students, underrepresented students, at risk students, as we know that high school that a high school diploma is just a minimum requirement to work a decent wage job and obtaining a post secondary education of some sort is crucial to rising out of poverty and getting a good page, a good wage paying job. Keep going. So now the question is, why do we focus on just college-bound students? Well, uh, these are the next couple of statistics are all from the recent OSPI report that was released on dropout rates. So this I thought was a really interesting um, statistic. The third most common reason is that school is not just for me, or they chose to stay home because they didn't feel that they could complete school, was associated with 7.8% of dropouts. I know that's the third most common reason, but the first two are a little bit undecided, so this is probably the most salient one for this um, uh, component. Um, additionally, um, higher than average dropout rates persisted for Black, Hispanic, Pacific Islander, and American Indian students, as well as special education, limited English, low income, migrant, homeless, foster, and male students. And there's like a sub bullet point on there that even talks about a higher percentage of dropout rates for even more specialized and at risk populations. So we're basically saying that some college bound students may fit into these categories and they, and for that reason, is another reason that we should focus on creating intervention strategies and um, finding ways that we can support these students even more so that they, do, they persist and they don't actually drop out. And finally, in this 2014-2015 school year, um, the uh, Dropout rate for low-income students was 17.6%, and the five-year dropout rate for low-income students was 23.1%. So this is all these statistics are basically just like underlying the issue that it's more important we have to support these underrepresented populations, especially for low-income and minority youth. Um, it's noted that the freshman year of high school often determines whether a student is successful throughout the rest of their high school career and can strongly influence their post-secondary aspirations. So even if they think they are or they are not college material. 
Um, according to the EPE Research Center, the ninth grade attrition rate is even higher in urban and high poverty schools with a 13% difference between low and high poverty districts. So again, it's showing that like this um, attrition rate is huge in those areas that we have the most amount of students. Thus, academic progress is an important focus for dropout intervention and or on-time graduation intervention rate. So, next one. So, I'm just trying to underline this connection, right? So, to further illustrate the impact of the freshman year grades on graduation, we're going to take a look at this chart from Chicago Public High School. And you'll notice, if you look right in the middle there, there's that 2.0 GPA um, picture at that bar graph and it says 72 percent and if you look next to it one bar graph to the left it says 1.5 is 53 percent so there is a 19 percent graduation drop off with students that earn less than the 2.0 their freshman year so to sum it up and tie it in a nice bow in short if students are able to visualize a minimum gpa to earn they will have a higher likelihood of graduating in four years like a 2.0, for example, as a minimum graduation requirement. Um, and they'll stay on track towards high school graduation. This approach, like a repledge campaign, then can be critical for the ninth grade year when students are setting themselves up for success or failure, both in terms of academics and in terms of their own self-image and where they can go um, beyond high school. So, as we're going to keep moving on here, they took the pledge, right? So, these are what the pledge requirements are. I know Michelle went over them again, but I think in, in connection to the last slide, especially the first bullet point is quite salient. So, the College Bound Repledge Campaign is an opportunity to re-engage College Bound Scholarship ninth grade students in high school and then remind them of pledge requirements. So, first pledge requirement, graduate from a Washington State high school with a 2.0 GPA or better. We just talked about how the huge drop off between 2.0 and 1.5 in that particular bar graph there made a huge difference in regards to graduating from high school. So it's awesome that they have this requirement and something to shoot for. Uh, second, have no felony convictions. Third, be income eligible as determined by the college with information from the FAFSA or WASPA. And fourth, enroll in an eligible college within one year of high school graduation. So they took this pledge and now they know all these requirements and essentially they're benchmarks that help them keep moving forward as they're going throughout their high school career. So what's awesome about this re-pledge campaign that we're going to talk about in a little bit is that it provides a platform to talk to these students, college bound specific students, around the scholarship's commitment while also connecting behavior, attendance, and class performance to the larger goal of high school completion, larger goal of post-secondary enrollment, and eventually a successful career, right? So we're talking long game here. Students who participate in repledge activities may view the College Bound Scholarship as a purpose to stay engaged, to stay connected to their academic performance, and eventually see that their performance here leading to better lifetime goals beyond high school. Uh, the Repledge campaign also offers a way for administrators and staff to potentially identify any students that might be having issues to provide additional support for students, to talk about different options, to give students a reason to keep staying in school, and an opportunity for intervention with students who might be struggling. So this just provides a platform for you to talk to these students and give them um, a reason that there's so much more beyond what's just happened right now or beyond what's happening this week um, and give them sort of like that motivational push forward. So when we say opportunity, what do we mean opportunity? How big of an opportunity is this? Well, there are over 230,000 students currently signed up for the College Bound Scholarship. I'm just going to let that sit in there for a second. 230,000 students. Now you're probably wondering what the heck these two pictures are on this slide. I just wanted to give you an idea of how many people that is. The number of students signed up for College Bound will be able to completely fill CenturyLink Stadium, that's the top picture right there, three and a half times over. So go Seahawks, but also think about how many people actually sit in that stadium and think about all the students that could fit three times that amount. 
Um, or it could be the combined enrollment of the two largest universities in Washington State, UW and WSU, at three times the enrollment of all the students that go to those two schools. So that is a lot of students, right? And then we're all here to make sure that we support each and every one of those students through high school and encourage them to look at post-secondary options and see what those post-secondary options can offer them. And so in order to tap into these students, we kind of have to figure out, like, what motivates them? And that's how we're going to segue to our next section. So how do we motivate high school students to think beyond high school? This dog is, might be the representation of some of the students that you know you work with or staff that you're working with. So I know a lot of you may be relating to this image here. Um, and you might be able to like even, might, there some, might be some images of students that are popping in your head about, uh, or people that you know um, that might have this look on their face right now um, and may fit that description. And I admit that sometimes, you know, it's really hard to get that motivation to get up to like find another day. Um, and it's really hard sometimes to get students to think of the long game, right? Because we're not telling them like, hey, wait till the end of the next period to get, you know, this amazing thing that happened. We're saying in four years, you'll have this amazing opportunity and we'll keep moving forward. Um, so let's be honest, it's hard for students to think of next week, let alone four years from now. And for them to develop one of the most important strategies of success um, is what the concept of sort of like figuring out how to pitch to students what delayed gratification looks like and what um, self-discipline in order for you to get to that delayed gratification. Because we're saying these amazing things are going to happen in four years, we have to figure out how to actually motivate them to think about how to get through those four years so that they can actually access what's coming up. So, oh, okay, I'm sorry. So this, the text is a little bit different, but it says understanding the generation. So right now, all high school students, even freshmen, fall into that millennial in, into that millennial category. Um, and recently, at our office, we had a presentation on generations, and it was a really uh, cool way to understand and connect with different colleagues. Um, I'm not sure if in your buildings you have the same uh, diverse group of people that you work with, but it was really interesting to see how um, baby boomers worked versus Generation X versus Generation Y versus millennials, and people in our office literally fall into all those different categories, and each person in a different generation had different priorities. So it was really interesting to learn about that. And then we were able to figure out ways that we could give each other grace sometimes if we had other priorities in the way that we were raised and the way that we think. So I think it's really important that we first understand the students that we're working with. So this is the generation of individuals between these dates. It's the largest living generation to date, and that's due to partially because of the um, large influx of immigration. It's about 20 million more people than Generation X. It consists of about 75.4 million people, and these people experience and are strongly influenced by the rise of technology and social networks. And when I say they are strongly influenced, they do not remember life before those that technology before the internet, before social networks existed. And so this is the realm and the area that they're comfortable with and that they are, um, that they thrive in. So some of the characteristics that, um, some of the characteristics that these um, individuals have is that they are, um, in regards to how they're focused around, they're global and networked, which is why social networks work so well for them versus the previous generation, Generation X, which is very tasks and result oriented. Uh, and additionally, like I was talking about technology, Generation X, um, people remember it being like, okay, yeah, I learned how to do that. I'm actually pretty savvy and I feel good about it. But like I said, millennials literally do not remember what life was like before social media because they never had to deal with that. In regards to just central characteristics, they're confident in themselves and in their future. They, many believe that college will help them launch into greatness. They're very team-oriented and network-oriented and may sacrifice their own identity to be a part of the team and to be a part of um, uh, the group moving forward. And they actually can see college as a key part in a high-paying job for success. Um, so there was this um, 
survey that was conducted by Eventbrite about millennial insights and what motivates millennials. 82% of them craved experiences. 77% of them say some of their best life experiences are from live events. So I'm thinking like concerts, comedy shows, um, street fairs, um, uh, activist movement, advocacy things. And this is the big one, 69% of them experience FOMO, and FOMO is what drives them to show up, share, and engage. So I know some of you are probably wondering what FOMO is, but we're going to cover that in just a second. I just want to pause for a moment and reiterate that 69, that's over half, almost two-thirds of these individuals and millennials experience this, and that is what drives them to actually do things. So, what is FOMO? FOMO is the fear of missing out. So, what I'm saying today is, is that this Repledge campaign that we're rolling out is the, um, we're going to make it work, we're going to make it sound so cool and so exciting for these students that they are going to want to participate because they're going to have the fear of missing out on what their life has to offer for them. We're going to talk, we're going to make it seem like if they do not participate in this, that there is a missed opportunity and that if they can't participate in this year, they're going to participate in the next year or they're going to ask questions about it. They're going to come to talk to you because they want to make sure that they're in the know. Um, our hope is to develop, to develop a program and intervention strategy, to develop a personalized approach that gets students talking about this um, campaign, this scholarship um, for weeks, months, days, years to come and see it that way and talk about it to other students so that there's constant conversation around that. So your question is probably, how do I do this? So the first way, um, and these are all components of um, what setting a college-going culture in your school looks like. The first way is to emphasize the appreciation of learning, right? So that every student is college material. Every student can choose between a technical, a two-year, a four-year public, a four-year private, and they have all those different options for them. And that every student has the opportunity to pick that. The second thing would be to foster a desire to succeed. So we're saying we're linking all these different college options and choices to uh, career jobs and educational attainment levels, right? So if you have a technical degree, this is what you're going to learn, and this is what you're going to get from what you learn. And thirdly, we're going to drive students to attend post-secondary options and become a lifelong learner. Because at the end of the day, post-secondary education really could be seen as another milestone and that you are constantly learning as an adult, you're constantly learning as a contributor to society, and then that is what life is all about. It's about learning and moving forward and um, getting different experiences. So what I'm asking everyone to do is to reframe the story arch. So a lot of high school students that I've talked to in the past uh, when I was recruiting for universities were all about um, just getting to high school, just getting to graduation. They're like, if I can make it through the next three years, I'll be good because all I need to do is graduate. They were seeing it as a conclusion, as a capstone. But in actuality, what we're trying to get them to do is see it as not a conclusion, but the beginning of the next chapter. And a lot of Graduation speeches say, like, congratulations, you're now done, and now it's where the hard work comes in. Um, and what I like about Repledge is that it reinforces that college is just the next step. So we're not going toward high school graduation. We're saying college is the beginning of the next chapter, and this is the chapter that you're going to be super excited about because you have so many choices to make, and literally the world is your oyster at that point in time. So what we're saying is, like, we're not to pushing towards graduation. We're pushing towards graduation and beyond. So let's go back to the core of all of this. As a reminder, every student who's on the college-bound portal in the high school for ninth grade took a pledge. In middle school, in either seventh or eighth grade, they took a pledge to be college-bound. So again, this is the thing that has been committed to with their parent or guardian. But why is this so important talking about it? The pledge happened almost two years ago or even the loss of a summer. Um, so what, what is college bound again? 
So a study completed in 2013 by the Burke Group, which is an independent evaluation firm, along with some focus groups and discussions with stakeholders that we did in 2015, um, and some other research called out the following factors contributing to this, like, wait, what is college bound again? First, what we found out in the narrative was that students forgot they were enrolled in the program due to lack of communication. Also, that students lacked accurate information about the requirements, what it covers, and how to redeem the scholarship. And while students and parents identified schools as the most trusted source of information, and school staff really want to support the program, and we've seen amazing things out there, thank you all, schools don't have the necessary resources or information, which is why we want to package this for you to be able to do that. Enter the College Bound Repledge campaign. So the College Bound Repledge campaign goals are mindful of the research we're talking about, mindful of serving millennials, and have been decided as follows. First is to remind students of the College Bound Scholarship Pledge and use re-pledge activities, and we'll give you some examples uh, in a second, to engage students around this future planning about various education pathways. Create that FOMO feeling of like, don't miss out on this college aspiration you committed to. Additionally, we have a re-pledge goal where students can get updated, update their student contact information with the Washington Student Achievement Council by having them sign up for a college-bound listserv. This means that students will be signed up and on a list that will give them direct communications about the program. And finally, and this one I think we've been alluding to a lot, is part of the party and this networking that millennials like is to celebrate the opportunity of the college-bound scholarship having students sign the re-pledge certificate and start to see this cohort and network that they all crave um, be a part of their reality. So now you're probably wondering, how do I get in on this, all this awesome action, right? <laughs> you're like, sign me up right away. So the first step is to let us know that you're planning on hosting a re-pledge activity at your school or your district or your community by completing the form at this link. I know it's a really long link, so I promise that we will send that we'll send up a follow-up email uh, with that link in it. Um, so that's step one. Uh, step two would be to identify college-bound students enrolled at your school using the portal. Um, for those of you that might be confused about how to do that, there will be instructions in um, a toolkit that we're providing that will help you um, know how to access um, student um, information from your portal. Um, step three would be to utilize the Repledge toolkit provided to help plan your activity, event, or intervention strategy. Like I just alluded to, there's going to be a really awesome toolkit that you're going to get that's going to help you um, implement whatever you decide as an activity, as an event, or, just, or if it's an intervention strategy at your school. And it'll give you some um, templates, some ideas, a bunch of different things that you're going to look at. And number four um, is have students or staff uh, post pictures of students signing the Repledge certificate on social media using the hashtag we are college bound. Again, if you don't feel comfortable about using social media, this is totally an option, um, but that's why uh, we were thinking that students, if they opted to um, do it themselves and to hashtag their picture of them doing it, which students do a lot on, you know, the Snapchat and the Instagrams of the world, then we want to capture all of that excitement and be able to highlight the fact that they are proud and excited about their commitment um, to this um, scholarship. So now you're probably thinking, Phil, what is the Repledge activity? <laughs> and you know that the beauty of this campaign is that, um, or you're probably sorry, you're probably thinking like, how do I create that? So, well, how are you going to help me um, bring those millennials in and get this party started? Right? You're probably at the edge of your seat thinking about that. And so, the beauty of this program is that it can be tailored to your school and to your community. You can go as big as doing a large event for all your ninth grade students at one time, maybe one 
one time isn't the appropriate way, so maybe you need to do it individually, maybe you do it by cope, maybe you do it by class time. There's a lot of different um, scenarios that you could do it in. Um, here are just four of the um, scenarios that we added to this slide. Um, one was organizing a college-bound time capsule, so getting those students together and having them all put in something that's iconic of their freshman year in high school. I'm trying to think of something that's cool right now that they could put in. Maybe it's like a figurine or a pin or maybe it's their class picture or something that they want to put in that time capsule. It could be a shoebox. It could be a container. Dig that little hole, cover it up, put some grass over it, and then four years from now, dig that back up, and they're going to see how amazing and how different they've been over the last four years. Um, or like I said, it could be more personalized. It could be scheduling personal advising sessions for college-bound students where you're able to implement those intervention strategies. Maybe there's some students that aren't doing so well and there's some students that are. So maybe some students just need that extra nudge saying like, hey, um, I noticed it's been a little bit rough of, uh, rough year so far. What what can I do to make sure that the rest, a half of your freshman year is great? What kind of support, et cetera? Um, or maybe it's hosting a college-bound alumni panel where you bring a high school or you bring students that are freshmen in college back to talk about how um, their experience in college is and they can talk about um, the differences between high school and college. Or if you're lucky and maybe you are next to a uh, community college or a university or wherever you're located or maybe there's a technical college close to you, um, maybe you can arrange um, a college tour with a nearby campus um, for these students just to get experience of what a college campus looks, feels, and smells like. So there's a lot of different ways that you can actually roll out this campaign um, to your students, whatever you feel like is the most effective way. Um, so here's some snapshots of our toolkit. This is not all that's in there. I promise it's more than just four um, page snapshot ideas. Um, there's going to be some, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it, might, it looks like it might not be quite up just yet. <laughs> Technical difficulties are awesome. Um, uh, just because you can't see it, I'm just going to paint a visual image for you because I'm super good at that. So imagine pieces of paper, snapshots <laughs> of paper. Uh, really what we're giving you in the toolkit are like letters to families um, that you can use and plug in your school contact information, plug in your school loan. Um, we have a bunch of, uh, we have a bunch of, um, Repledge examples in it as well. Um, so you can actually see, I believe we have um, 10 examples. Some of them were from the field that our awesome regional officers um, said that they've heard worked in the past. Some of them, because our, our regional officers are awesome, they sort of like invented and created different ways. Um, there's also um, some, a form letter for administrators. So if you're looking for um, some support on that administration level or some um, backing about why you're spending your time doing this. Um, there's also a letter in there that talk about, like, from an administration level, why it was an important campaign. And um, there's also, for those of you that are interested, a how-to social media. So for some um, schools out there, I know that, like, college and career centers have, like, a Facebook page. And so we did a little bit of a how-to tag and post us to make sure that we're able to elevate all the amazing work and pictures that you're collecting. Um, and so all that's going to be in the toolkit. In addition to, like I talked about, like how to access the portal and um, other student resources as well. So what's coming in late January? So in order for us to support um, our shared effort of making sure students understand the program um, and, you know, how to use it, here's some things you can anticipate. So first, we're working with Yokiko and the Washington Student Achievement Council on a student-friendly one-pager on what the college-bound scholarship covers. So that will be coming. Um, secondly, we know in order for um, our amazing school counselors to create a team, to create this FOMO feeling, to generate um, excitement around a repledge, it does require creating um, a pitch. Um, and pitching to students the importance, um, and really the power of that special invite. So we'll be creating a one-pager on the college-bound repledge that's student-facing. 
so will help a student receive the message of why this activity is so important to them. Um, and then we'll be doing a one-pager um, that's student-facing on um, picking the right high school classes, and that's um, in collaboration, again, with WASAC and OSPI. Um, a student college-bound repledge certificate, which is just a reminder of what they pledged and a reminder of how the program works. And then we're working on um, securing limited quantities of student giveaways for participants. So we hope that these things will all help you to figure out creatively what you think the activity should be for your school and then how you want that activity to integrate the idea of reminder of the program, reminder of the commitment, and really the ceremony behind the re-pledge. Um, so I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, I've had um, the pleasure and honor of doing this work since 2008, so uh, basically right after the legislation was passed. And I am humbled and amazed time and time again by all that I learned from school counselors, um, the amazing work you do, um, the amazing um, person you are to so many students in your school. And I say that to say, the narrative in our surveys time and time again said that high school counselors is both where students receive their information and also it's where they like to get their information. Um, so in essence, the narrative would say schools and school counselors are the most trusted and the most accessible resource and communication channel for students. Um, so it's with gratitude to all of you that you've joined us today and also how important and uh, significant you are to these efforts and how much we just appreciate and need your help um, in leveraging this amazing opportunity. Um, so we mentioned before there's a team of eight in the field. Um, they serve eight distinct regions across the state. You can see them listed here. Um, the counties they serve, um, and the ESD regions. So a little bit about how we do this. At the crux of our work are our school partnerships. Working with schools, our regional officers here train and equip frontline school staff. We know you all do it. We want to honor it and leverage it and make it the best that it can be. It's absolutely crucial that we support and make sure you have no barriers as school staff and we want you to know that you're a part of a larger network of college-bound champions. We persist to make that happen um, and are here to support your efforts. Um, I wanted to recognize that for many school staff and all of you on the phone, college-bound work is now embedded in your work and you see it as day-to-day -day as a part of it. Alignment to the Credit College-Bound Scholarship continues to be a critical galvanizing tool for our state. And knowing the power of great galvanizers, we really hope that February will galvanize our high school message to college, high school college bound students by committing to that re-pledge. Um, I'm gonna go a little off my script and kind of run it, read you an in the moment um, narrative from one of my colleagues in the field. So the counselor I've been working with now is working with the navigation teachers. She's identified which college bound students are where in which navigation session, section, and then did a minimum training on college bound and encouraged teachers to support college bound pledge requirements. As a result, students and teachers are making an effort to reach out to counselors and talk about college bound. Here's the message from the counselor, which is quite amazing. The kids and teachers are so excited. They keep coming down to talk and ask about college bound. It's the best. Looking forward to our freshman event in February. We hope that this sort of narrative is something we can support in your school and create this FOMO and excitement for you and your community. And we are dedicated to the fact that this can be a lever for you to have a major influential lever on reframing that story arch to be not about high school graduation, but about it being the beginning of the experience of college, career, and beyond. So as a reminder, College Bound is this opportunity to create um, an engaged environment around the importance of the College Bound Scholarship. It provides a platform to talk with students around the scholarship commitment, 
while also promoting the importance of GPA, uh, school success, um, and life after high school. Um, we really hope that you feel free to contact our team uh, for partnership, for thinking about how to customize this to your work, um, and for us to help you see success in this campaign. Um, and with that, thank you for your time, thank you for your support, and we are ready to take questions. No questions? I'm not seeing any questions, so if you guys have questions, feel free to type it into the chat box, and we would be happy to answer them as they come in. Ah, so it says that Dave Rovick's phone number is not complete. Could you hand out his or provide his phone number? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think we'll be sending this as a follow-up. So what we can do is revise the slide, thank you for the catch, to make sure you have it. I also want to point you to our website, which is www. Oh, it's on the website. It's not. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you very much. We'll fix it for you. Um, and we can follow up as well. And I actually think it's probably listed here correctly. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, okay. We'll fix it. Thanks for the catch. Thank you so much for attending. And um, they have one final question that came in here. How are the two kits going to be made available? Thank you for your question. So we are going to post it online. We'll be sending out a, a follow-up to the webinar, and within that, we'll provide the link. There will also be an online form that you can fill out that will allow us to mail you the, the, the takeaway options and a print copy of the toolkit should you want it in a paper version. If you are not on, we're we're hope we're planning to send out um, an email to our listserv. If you're not on our listserv or you currently don't get information from us, if you go to our website, which uh, Michelle might have just said, www.wcan.org, um, one of the main bubbles on the website is newsletter. So if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll also be added to our list and we'll be able to send you all the information about this February um, repledge campaign um, when we send everything else out. Yeah, so uh, if you're excited to revisit this, this webinar, we'll be posting it on the Ready, Set, Grad site on the 21st, so Monday. Um, and then we'll be sending follow-ups so you all have the links, contact information, and the ability um, to get moving on connecting us to start the work. I think that's it. Thanks for your time today. It was fun, and we can't wait to get started with all of you or continue our partnership with all of you in this great opportunity for our state. Have a good day.